Hello, everybody. I hope you're having a great week. Uh, today, we are taking a closer look at the octopus, an animal that has fascinated me for a long time. Certainly, most of us know about the inky fluid that it um, squirts out at something that is threatening it when it's afraid. We also know that they change color. One of the things that you might not know is that it's considered to have nine brains because the arms operate individually. And so there are neurons, brain neurons, if you want to call them that, in each of the eight tentacles and in the head. It also has three hearts, and each of those hearts has a specific job that none of the two, none of them do the same thing. And it also has blue blood because of the amount of copper that's in the bloodstream. One of the fascinating things to me about the octopus is how it catches its prey by coming down from above and covering over whatever it wants, sneaking up on it. Very, very sneaky, that octopus. Here's a nice uh, picture of an octopus. You can really see the eight arms. And we know that the arms operate individually. And you often see, if you watch any videos, see any underwater um, scenes, an octopus's arms will be in different spots doing different things. So one arm might be in a cave seeking out something to eat, and the other arm could be opening a shellfish, which is pretty crazy. It also has a really powerful beak underneath that head that we really can't see. It has a, a jaw and then inside there is a beak, something like what you would see in a parrot. It also has a barbed tongue to um, reach in and grab everything that it's eating. And much like the woodpecker, I even read that there is a, I don't know what you call it. It's like a tooth inside there, one so that if it needs to crack something open, it can operate that so that it can digest it. Uh, most octopuses have a venomous saliva and they also can regrow their limbs, much like a chameleon or a lizard that loses part of its tail and the octopus can grow that right back. I was reading about a mimic octopus they were first found in 1998 off the shores of Indonesia, and I think there's been a few found off of Australia. But you can see by the picture on the left that the octopus can turn itself into something else. It can impersonate something else that would frighten away or um, frighten away prey or something that might eat it. And you can see it can turn itself into a sea snake by burying most of its body down in the, the sand. They usually go along the bottom and just having one or two tentacles strung out together to make it look like a snake, a lionfish, which is very poisonous, the sole flatfish, even a crab, which is pretty amazing that they're this master of disguise and can impersonate so well. I couldn't help but think about in Ephesians, how the scripture tells us that men will trick us in these days. And that also we don't really wrestle with humans, but we, if you are a believer, uh, wrestle with spiritual forces. And certainly this makes me think of how the enemy disguises himself and can trick us into believing something about ourselves, um, believing um, something about other people and so on. So during 2020, when I was home alone, I watched My Octopus Teacher on Netflix. This is not a commercial, but if you have some time, you need to watch this amazing film. Um, I learned so much about the octopus and really learned a lot about humans too. And you'll see all of these pieces that I'm talking about, including the fact that the octopus uses tools and can form a relationship with a human. Um, you also learn how the male octopus, his life is in danger when he's mating with the female because she can decide just to kill him. And um, he eventually dies after mating just a few months. He doesn't live very long before he's dead. And the female too, after she lays her eggs, she works super hard to protect. And you would see it if you watch this documentary to protect those eggs. And after they hatch, her body begins to deteriorate 
and it doesn't take long for her body to die. Of, they call it suicide of sorts. It also should, should, shouldn't surprise us that the octopus inspires technology. I read about um, technology, people, um, researchers looking at camouflage systems based on the color changing ability of the octopus, robot arms for humans, which I had never thought of, um, the suction cups on the um, tentacles that they would be mimicked for robots so that they could pick up dangerous things in natural disasters that humans wouldn't want to touch. The propulsion certainly is one of those um, creations that we would like to mimic in technology. The endoscopy, you know, the soft tube, they have looked at the um, octopus. If you've seen any videos of an octopus, it can go through these teeny little spaces. You wouldn't believe um, what a little slot it needs to get out and, and in and through. And also um, camera manufacturers looking at the eye of the octopus. It is no doubt that God created a creature like this, unlike any other. Have a great week, and I hope to see you back here next week.